Hi, I'm DJ Ryan Fresh, and welcome back to the channel. We are currently in about the sixth or maybe seventh week of uh, the stay-at-home order here in Seattle. It had me thinking about how many kids or how many people are out there bored and watching all the live DJ sets that are currently happening and maybe are taking an interest in DJing. When I first got into DJing back in high school, there were no comprehensive guides. I just kind of bought a bunch of shit and hoped it worked and then I just kept building on top of that. But to help y'all out, I'm making this comprehensive starter guide to a DJ setup. Now, if your interest in DJing is purely based on curiosity, maybe you saw D-Nice or Jazzy Jeff's sets on Instagram Live, uh, and you're not quite sure if that's where you wanna go, but you just, just wanna play around with it, I would highly recommend getting the new Mark DJ to go to Touch, which I reviewed, or the Hercules Starlight. Uh, they are mini controllers that have Serato built in. It's just a good way for you to see if it's something that even interests you. Uh, they're also travel size. Uh, they're under $100, so you're not really breaking the bank. As far as using gear to either just start off with or to even have something that you can travel with, uh, to do paid gigs. Uh, the first thing that I would look at is the uh, internet for used gear. Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, Reverb, eBay, uh, even Guitar Center used uh, are great places to start. I would always say that if you have more than just a passing interest in DJing and you want to start with turntables, I always recommend the Techniques 1200s. I've had mine since 1997 and I've only had to have one of them serviced once. Uh, otherwise, they still work really well. They are built uh, incredibly solid and they, they are not unlike tanks. Uh, that being said, it's hard to find affordable 1200s or whatever the version that Techniques is currently selling now because they're primarily built for audiophiles. You might be able to find a, a good used pair out there. When CDJs and controllers were on the rise a few years ago, a whole mess of 12s were available in the uh, secondhand market. So start there. Um, and th actually, I would say that for all equipment that I'm going to talk about today. DJing is an extracurricular activity that can be kind of expensive. So everything on this list, I want to keep it as low as possible. So we're talking about under $2,000, which again is a ton of money. Uh, you know, I'm thinking back to when I was like 13, 14 and just trying to start DJing. And the bulk of what I really wanted to spend my money on was records. But you do have to start somewhere uh, as far as gear goes. Or to satiate that curiosity, uh, let's talk about some of the other stuff that's available. If you just want to get into the Scratch DJing subculture, I would highly recommend the Newmark PT-01 Scratch. It is a great portable turntable. Uh, I still have mine even though I've been using the Reloop more often. The great thing about the PT-01 Scratch, other than the price point, um, it's under 130 bucks. You can mod it, you can add new faders to it, you can add Bluetooth capabilities, you can change the tone arm, uh, or you can leave it stock and it's still a pretty solid turntable to practice scratching with. Uh, the plus side about modding the PT-01 is that you really get to know your gear, you get to know the equipment, and you end up learning a skill that a lot of people would value, uh, which is to be able to open up uh, an, uh, an electric device and just you know customize it to your own liking. Next up, we're gonna talk about controllers. Uh, controllers are a good entry point into getting DJ gear. You get everything that you need in the form of would-be CDJ jog wheels, a mixer, and Q and other performance pads uh, built into it. The first controller that I would recommend would be the Pioneer DDJ SB2 or SB3. When I got my first controller a few years ago, it was actually just a regular uh, DDJ SB and it was totally like a great way to get used to using a controller. Uh, I had gone from using turntables and a mixer, uh, then moving up to using Serato Scratch Live. And this was just a good way to just get used to using something that you know, you'd find in clubs or in other venues. If you're transitioning from traditional vinyl to digital DJing. I've seen the Pioneer SB2 go used for under 200 bucks. I know that the manufacturer retail price for the SB3, the, the current iteration, is uh, about 250 or less than that, but I'm sure you can find 
again, like open box or used ones for less than that. The other good thing about the SB3 is that it was partially overseen by DJ Jazzy Jeff. Actually, there's a video that talks about at length of what he did, which I will link right here. Now let's talk about the full vinyl setup. I would highly recommend that you find used 1200s if you can get your paws on them, but it can present itself to be a challenge. Luckily, we live in a time when the super OEMs have taken over, and so while you could get 12s that are built like a tank, you also have other options that are a little bit friendlier on the wallet. The first ones that I would start off with would be the Pioneer PLX 500s. They are more or less Techniques 1200s, but rebranded for Pioneer. A lot of people use the Pioneer PLX 1000s, uh, which are a little bit sturdier. Uh, the torque on them are a lot better and they have ultra pitch. But again, if you're in a position where you don't want to spend too much money or you're just starting off, the 500s are a good way to go. Another recommendation that I would have would be the Mixars STAs. This is another super OEM turntable. It has great torque, pretty easy to use, easy to carry. While it wasn't as solid as the Techniques 1200, it still had a pretty good feel. I would say it's comparable to the PLX 500. If we're talking about turntables and we also have to talk about getting needles. Now, normally I would suggest the Shure M447s, but those have been discontinued. Uh, as have all of Shure's DJ cartridges. Unfortunately, this is also something that you really can't skimp on. The uh, ones that I would recommend would be the Ortofon uh, Thudrumpel DJ Cubert needles. They're great, the sound output is fantastic, and they're pretty steady. If I had to pick another one, um, which is not much of a different price point from the Cuberts, I would recommend the Ortofon Concord Mark IIs. Uh, great for clubbing, great for scratching, just all around uh, one of the best needles that you can get out there. Now let's move on to mixers. You actually have quite a few options here and to keep it sub $2,000. I'm going to highlight the following three. First would be the Newmark Scratch. It's the uh, newest mixer that I'm going to recommend. It comes with Serato vinyl and has a lot of effects already built into it. It looks somewhat similar to the club standard, which would be the Pioneer S9, just minus four pads, but otherwise they're pretty easy just to click through if you need the full use of eight pads. It also has XLR outputs, which means that it's good for a professional setting. The other Serato mixer I would recommend would be the Mixar Zuo. I've talked about this so many times. It's one of my favorite mixers. The Galileo fader in it is butter. It's still my travel mixer that I bring with me everywhere. The last mixer that I would recommend is just the O5 Pro uh, by Vestax. This is one that you're only going to find used, but it's another mixer that just holds up forever, lasts forever. I've been lucky enough to find a used O5 Mark III for like 40 bucks, 50 bucks, I think. Yeah, it was for like $50. So they're out there. So, you know, the most that you could pay for one is maybe 200. Now you're not gonna get all the bells and whistles that you would with the Mixar Zuo or the Newmark Scratch. In fact, if you wanted to use digital vinyl, you'll have to get a Serato interface, either one by Rain or one by Denon, but you're still getting like one of the best mixers and one of the best affordable mixers out on the market. And the last thing I wanna talk about are headphones. I know that I've reviewed the One Audio headphones, but if you're just starting out, I would just go with some plain Sony headphones. I got this pair from Target for under $20. It still works fine. It's actually my go-to headphones when I'm trying to edit videos. So I still get quite a bit of use out of it. It's not perfect for a club setting, but if you are just starting out and you don't want to pay $300 for Beats or Audio-Technica headphones, then I would recommend these cheap Sony ones. They're good to start off with. And that's what I have for my list of starter DJ gear. Do you have any suggestions? What would you start off with? If I missed anything on this list, uh, put it down in the comments. Uh, feel free to subscribe to this channel. See what else I have going on on ryanfresh.com. Follow me on these social platforms. And yeah, I'll uh, hit you guys with a new video later. Peace.